Greetings from Cybertron. This is Soundjack here with a review of the Transformers Studio Series Voyager Class Starscream. Yep, I got one of the mainline releases. I picked it up from my local Target and I hear that they are coming out at all sorts across the country at this point. Well, if you're in the US, other countries I've been hearing they've been coming out too. I just saw one about UK and all that, but they're coming out. You can get them. Wave 1 is properly here, so I'm reviewing Starscream now. So before we get into it itself, we do have to talk about his packaging. Well, not the whole of the packaging, but you can see that he is number 6. There's his art, there's his name, there's Hasbro, there's Transformers. He's from the regular Transformers movie. There he is on the side, there he is on that side. Autobot logo, which still confuses, which confuses me, I must say. This was also on Thundercracker's box. I guess all of them are going to have Autobot logos there. There he is on the back. Let's raise the camera up a little bit. There he is on the back. There's the cross cell. There's the bottom. But we do have to come into the box. So you can see the backdrop that comes with Starscream. This is the scene from the first movie in the battle. Um, what does the box describe it as? Mission, Mission City Battle. That's what it calls it, and that's what it is. Uh, you can see the background, destroyed cars, Michael Bay explosions, jet planes in the background, generations in the corner, 06 Studio Series. You got Transformers in the sand there. You got Transformers in that Autobot logo that was showing up on the outside of the box. And that's that. I'll bring this back when we get to the end of the review. But now, let us take a closer look at Starscream. Uh, he turns into his movie one alternate form, an F-22. Well, this is his alt form in all of the movies, but he gets a new set of tattoos on his body in Revenge of the Fallen that stay through Dark of the Moon. And from leaks, we are going to be getting a toy of that later on down the line. So, yeah, if you prefer that, uh, be advised that that will be coming. Um... But I gotta say, this is a very nice looking F-22 for the, uh, proportionally a lot better than the first movie, Starscream, which I owned, um, and I will show off in a comparison once we get to that. But he looks quite nice. He's got, um, like a predominant, his main coloration is like kind of predominantly beige, but it's kind of got like these gray or like hues that like fade in and out here and there. It's very interesting. Um, and it's pretty nice. Uh, he's got a nice white nose cone. It's actually hard plastic. You got a translucent orange cockpit right there with a little seat in there for a pilot. You got a lot of um, details on the wings. You got a Decepticon logo right there, and then just uh, I guess like an Air Force logo. I think that I think that's what that is. It's a, some kind of aerial unit logo thingy. Uh, you got some nice white borders along the edges of the wings. Nice. Uh, tail fins there and then underneath you got a lot of robot stuff it's very um obvious this is a lot of robot mode junk you can't tell exactly what it is but you can tell it's jet kibble it's robot kibble underneath um the jet body but again better than figures i've had experience with i've not owned the Dark of the Moon Deluxe Starscream, which I hear that this figure is basically an upscale of, so I can't make that comparison. But if you knew, if you have that figure, from my understanding, this figure is a lot like that. So a lot of this underside stuff looks should look familiar to you if you have the figure, or what have you. Again, it's it's as clean as it can get for for a jet former, and they do again they do a fairly good job of like not showing off um, uh, specific parts like these will be the arms, the legs are here, but you really can't tell that. You just know this is a sort of like kibble, robot mode kibble hiding underneath. And then he does have these three landing gear. One, two, three. And if you don't want them, whoops, if you don't want them out, you can flip that front one up like that and flip these two to the side like that. And there is... Starscream without the landing gear. And he does sit on the table decently. 
um, if you don't have the landing gear up, so they're not necessary. Obviously, he's going to wobble, but, you know, that works. You can do that. Landing gear does make it look stand a bit nicer. No rolling up the landing gear, however. Um, no real articulation on him. That's pretty much all you can do with that. So let's get into the accessory he comes with. Uh, his uh, missile knife thingy from the movie that is very prominent when he first lands at the um, uh, Hoover Dam and then he whips this out and then fires a lot of missiles at the Hoover Dam. So um, yeah, pretty nice. Pretty neat. Uh, you got some soft rubber for the spiky bits at the end there. And then you got six missiles painted in gold. And then you got the rest of the thing. Um, there, the main place of storage for this is there's two tabs right there that fit these two slots right there. So you'll do that, tab that in, and there he has missiles sticking out of his butt, pretty much, his jet butt, pretty much. Uh, however, while that is the main method of storage, um, there is also five millimeter posts, a uh, five millimeter post right here, and a lot of five millimeter ports all over the body. You can see where I pointed. There's six of them all over the place. And the main ones for this, the, probably the best ones to use in this configuration if you want, are the ones underneath the wings. So he got some missile knives um, underslung on his wings. And again, like I said, there's other ones, other places. You can stick that one there. You can stick them on his, what will be his forearms right there. Doesn't allow him to use the landing gear properly, but hey, you can do that if you want. All of those places are completely viable. But again, main method of storage is going to be in the back right there. But that is all I have to say on the jet mode. So let's get into some size comparisons. Here he is with Times Return Legends Class Bumblebee. And you can see how they scale. I do have to raise the camera a tad for that. Again, how they scale. Deluxe class Chrome Dome. And you can see how they scale. Voyager class Megatron. You can see how they scale. Leader class six shot. Let's see, Starscream's still longer than six shot. Here he is with his 2007 toy, uh, movie one, Starscream. Uh, the, the studio series Starscream is a bit longer, a little bit different colors, and uh, better transformation and uh, all that and a better jet and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, also, here he is with uh, Studio Series Thundercracker, the Target exclusive. I mean, Toys R Us exclusive, sorry. Uh, you can see that. And for fun, here he is with Revenge of the Fallen, Scott Warp. So you can see that. So yeah, that is all there's to say on Starscream's jet mode. So now let's roll right along to his robot mode. So landing gear, fold that up. Obviously then we can get started. Uh, let's start by flipping that tab, that panel out and this panel out. Uh, we're gonna then come up here, pull these tabs out from underneath the wings. You're gonna have to just kind of Pull this wing out a little bit to get that tab out and up. Do the same on the other side. And then you have the clearance to flip that up. Next, you're going to come here and push these wings up on, a, on this slider right here. You can see that it just slides right up. And these bits just kind of groove into the gaps that exist right there. Now we got that. Let us come in here and pull these panels out. Technic well, actually, yeah, best way to do that, pull these sections up, strain them out, 
and I'll definitely give and I'll give you a lot of good clearance to pull these sections out of the way like so you can rotate these up rotate this that way rotate that that way pull the hand out like so and that is the arm do that on the other side get that all transformed and you got the arms and they're just going to hang out there for the moment so we're going to rotate uh, the f-22 wings up like so and while we're doing that we're going to open these and I'll fold these out so as they are ready for when we are going to connect them so let us do that and before we get fold these all the way up we are going to flip this panel out this all goes all the way like that rotate this all the way around folding the nose cone in like this and revealing starscream's head we can now close that section up and fold the wings up like so you're going to want to close that panel up and then we're going to fold these wings back here and these tabs right there are going to go into those slots right there So as we get that all locked into place and now we can lock these sections into place by taking the tab right there and putting into the slot right there and that shall fit you may have to move this or about a little bit to get into just into the right place but it's quite easy to do so um then you got the upper body pretty much done so now we can come down here we will untab the lower legs we shall rotate the upper legs forward and then we're gonna straighten the legs out pretty much because he's got chicken legs so they're not gonna really be straight that's that's kind of the angle you're going for just this 90 degrees right there and then you flip the toes out and that is one leg and then same thing on the other side, just straighten the leg out as straight as it can be for Starscream. And there you have Starscream in his robot mode. And gotta say, movie Starscream's design is not my cup of tea, gotta say. I, I appreciate the movie aesthetic with the um, less boxy transformation designs that were typical of Transformers before the movie started. Uh, so a much more mechanical, not clearly like having some jet bits on him, but uh, clearly having some like jet pieces on him, but having a lot of like mechanical details about is really cool. But like the way they went with Starscream um, is uh, weird because they just turned him into a giant Dorito shape. Uh, with these weirdly skinny legs and arms and yeah that this is criticism of the movie of the actual movie design however that is not a criticism of the toy because this makes this does a very good job of replicating that design in toy form so I gotta applaud them for that making that design work as a toy um, though I will say a thing that kind of doesn't work is like this kind of like has a like this got a lot of mechanical details going on so it's like and fills up the chest from certain angles you're gonna see through that chest onto the side so like if you've got Starscream pose kind of like this you're gonna see some pretty big gaps going on that's the only real complaint I have but I am also not particularly keen on like uh, transformations that require like a lot of fake pieces to come up and fold around to get it to look right i understand that you need to do that for some transformations to get it to look good that's been a thing with optimus primes a lot recently but i'd prefer if like you can do it without needing to bring up extra pieces but especially with the movie aesthetic you're gonna have to do that a bit but hey that's just a commentary in my personal taste not of this toy in general so if this is so if you're fine with that, that's completely fine. Um, I gotta say the the nose cone is very like solid in the in the on the chest compared to like all of these like crazy mechanical detailings and pieces right there. But that again, that's just me. But getting a closer look into this toy, let's bring some more light forward. 
Um, you got his head sculpt, which is a pretty smooth head sculpt compared to the rest of his body. Um, you got some nice gray, gray, uh, gunmetal gray and uh, gold detailings on the front there. Some nice red eyes going on there. Like I said, you got the nose cone at the center of the chest, or well, the, basically the front hat, the front end of the jet on the chest. Um, you got a lot of mechanical detailing bits going on there. Some of it just molded in the plastic, some of it painted a gunmetally gray. It's a bit more molded, but you got some gold paint going on there. You got this lower section right here, a little bit of um, paint, I believe, on the gray screen stuff, um, and then some darker colors as well. And you got the legs, you got the beige, you got the gray, you got more beige, you got some uh, gunmetal paint there, and then you got the just like gunmetal, the, 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 this kind of dull um, molded um, plastic for the, the landing gear that do function as his heels. Um, yeah, which is very an interesting way to go about doing that. Um, and then you got the arms, you got beige, you got uh, grays, you got dark grays, you got a bit beige paint, I believe that is right there. And then you got his hands, which are just kind of a flat gray right there. And then you have his back and all of the wings just basically fold up into the back. Though then this all sticks out and then you're like, you can see the nose cone through the, the back that's kind of hidden by here and there's nothing there. He doesn't have a butt of any kind. <laughs> that's all I can think of really. There's just nothing here, which is a little weird, but I, it works. It's fine. It's, it's the back. You don't, that's not the worst thing in the world. Uh, though I will also comment that there's some nice molded detailing on the backs of these legs as well as the front. Um, but yeah, so for articulation, his head can rotate a full 360 degrees. Uh, you have two sets of elbow joints on the arm. You got this one right here, which is a bit more of just the transformation joint, as well as this one up here, um, which is the, kind of more of the main uh, shoulder joint. Um, and then as well, there's also 360 degree rotation right there. You also have 360 degree rotation at the bicep. You have 90 degree elbow bend, and then you have another 90 degree elbow bend. So he's got a double jointed elbow right there. Again, that's more of the bicep bend, but hey, what are you gonna do? Um, it, it gives him a double jointed elbow, so that's nice. And then you got this ball jointed hand so it can rotate a full 360, fold in, fold out. And then I guess if you want, you can use the transformation joint as well to give him some really creepy hand poses if you want. Um, nothing else with the hands, uh, nothing at the waist. Um, his hips can bend that far out, that far in, that far back and that far forward. Um, no thigh swivel. Um, knees can bend, first knee can bend that far forward and that far back. Second knee can bend that far forward and that far back. And then the swivel on the leg is at that second knee bend. So that's the 360 right there. And then the toes can bend down a little bit if you want. And the landing gear can like fold inward if you don't want him standing on his landing gear. You can get him to stand without using the landing gear, though obviously he's a large figure, a lot of weight on the top. So you're gonna want those to get into more poses. Like I said, you can get him to stand. It's not gonna, you can't do that with a lot of poses. Also the, the, the landing gear is just kind of like hanging out of his ankles is also very weird. So just, just make them heels like they're supposed to be. Um, besides all of that, he can wield his weapon in his robot mode. Uh, you're gonna transform the hand, the one hand back into its alternate, its alt mode configuration. You'll stick the weapon in like so with this tab sticking up the same way as the hand. You'll kind of rotate it around at the bicep. So you got a smooth, clean um, uh, weapon transformation, you know, effect going on there. And then you got his uh, missiles and he's got his stabby so you can stab and then missile blast someone. It's like, it's like a very weird bayonet, bayonet, you gotta say. But I mean, if you're gonna use the missiles when you have jabbed someone, I mean, that's gonna probably kill them. So 
I guess it works. I guess it works if you apply some weird logic to it. Um, if you don't want to have that stored there, um, you can use the five millimeter posts holes, I mean, on the back side of the hand, of the arms, so you can have it have him still have his hands and then still have the missiles deployed. Um, this, uh, the underwing uh, five millimeter hole ends up being on uh, his sides. So I guess if you want him to do that, you can. And then on the back, you've got three places of weapon storage. So you can either stick them behind one of these upper ports. Yes, give him like an over the shoulder missile thing if you want. Though my preferred place is kind of using this middle one right here, that kind of just the least um, obtrusive one, kind of, I guess. I mean, this one's not obtrusive at all, but like it's not balanced, even though the weapon itself is asymmetrical because the two jabby things at the front aren't the same size, but oh well, I'm just nitpicky like that. But um, that's all there is to say on his robot mode. So now let's get into some robot mode size comparisons. Almost forgot to show him off with that uh, background he comes with. Fits on pretty well, I must say. Here he is with Legends class Bumblebee. And Bumblebee comes up to about his hips. Deluxe class Chrome Dome. And Chrome Dome's almost at the top of Starscream's cockpit chest. Almost, not quite. It's a bit... That's a little bit taller. We have Voyager class Megatron, his boss from another universe. Um, and Starscream's a hair taller at him than him at the head. Just a just a touch taller than Megatron head to head. And Megatron has fallen ice! Starscream now lead the Decepticons! I had to. I just had a perfect opportunity. I just had to. Here he is with leader class six shot. And Starscream is like halfway up those chest wings on six shot. Uh, let's get him completely in shot. And then we have movie one Starscream. Movie one Voyager Starscream. Movie One Star Cream is just a touch tall at the head. He's got a bit, a lot more bulk to him. But hey, there's that. There is Studio Series Thundercracker with my preferred wing configuration. And you know what? Let's show him off with Skywarp. So here's three G1 Seekers, all in three separate bodies. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Whoop. Uh, yeah. Overall, Starscream is a very nice Voyager figure representing his movie series design. Again, not my favorite movie design just because the triangle chicken leg thing is weird. For anyone, especially, especially Starscream. Um, if it was a completely different character, maybe I'd be better with it. But you know, just being Starscream is just like, this is so weird. It's a weird design, but like robot mode looks like the movie version. The weapon um, compatibility is good. Um, legs are fine. They're weird because the double 90 degree angles, it just don't, that's just so weird, but it work, you, can, you can do stuff with it. You can get them to pose. There's a lot of posability in the arms. Um, jet mode looks great, especially compared to the movie one Starscream that I've had for years. Uh, it's been over 10 years at this point. Wow. Um, and though there's still a lot of people, but th that's just expected with jet formers at this point, honestly. But yeah, overall, very good figure. I can't wait to get more figures from uh, the Studio Series line. But this is the one I decided to pick up. It looks really good. It's going to look great with Thundercracker. And... I suggest you pick it up if this is your taste. If you're into movie design, if you like good movie toys, you want to get a complete collection, I do de definitely recommend getting this figure. But that is all I have to say on Studio Series Starscream. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, please like and share this video and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Soundjack426. Also, please consider donating on my Patreon page to help support the channel. All the links will be in the description below. 
Thanks for tuning in. This is Soundjack signing off.